Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi everybody, welcome back to the third lecture of chapter three, where I'm going to introduce the idea of a line integral. Okay, line integrals. Big subject and a bit confusing at the start. So we've had vector valued functions of a scalar variable t, time, and now we're going to be focusing on vector valued functions of a vector variable. So uppercase bold A is a function of x, y, and z. And you can think of this at any point in three-dimensional space, we have a vector, any point. So sometimes those are called vector fields. So we're going to be concerned with vector fields. OK, um, and then we've already, I mentioned, had the notion of a space curve or path. And we represent it in this way. And there are a lot of applications where we're going to look at adding up the contributions of a vector field along a path. That's a bit of a vague statement, but you'll see exactly what I mean. Whenever someone says adding up, you think of integration. OK. So along our space curve, let's suppose we have two points, P1. That's evaluating a space curve at a particular t1 and p2. OK, and we have our vector field or vector valued function of a vector variable. That's a bit of a mouthful. And suppose we want to compute the integral of the tangential component of a along the space curve from p1 to p2. OK, so that is given by this expression, the integral of a dot dr. Now dr is dx times i plus dy times j plus dz times k. So computing the integrand is pretty easy. And if we're integrating around a curve that is closed, so integrate around a space curve that's a closed curve. We sometimes write it, the integral in this way, a little circle on the integral, and C for a closed path. But this is really a very formal expression because it doesn't really tell you how to do the computation. And so what I mean by that is best described in an example, and I'll do this example, and then we're going to spend do a little more stuff with vectors. And then we're in the next chapter, we're going to spend a lot of time with examples. So let's consider a very concrete example of a vector field. And let's evaluate a dot dr from the origin, 0, 0, 0, to the point 1, 1, 1. But now I specify the path along straight lines from, well, it's best to just draw a picture. which I had below. OK, from the origin to 0, 0, 1, we'll call that C1. From 0, 0, 1 to 0, 1, 1, we'll call that C2. And from 0, 1, 1 to 1, 1, 1, we'll call that C3. I've specified the path, and I want you to integrate from the origin to 1, 1, 1, along that path that I specified. It's three pieces. The nice thing about integrals is that they're additive. So we can compute along each path and add them up. 
Now let's first of all write out a dot dr. So this is a dot dr. And now we'll use the fact that, that uh, i, j, k are unit length and mutually orthogonal. And we get this expression. And we want to integrate along these three um, elements of the path whose sum gives us the entire path that we're asked to integrate over. So C1, C2, C3. And I've written them out here. So let's go C1. C1, keep in mind that x and y are both 0. So we can plug zeros in to the expression there. And so dx happens to be 0 also, dy happens to be 0, and we're just left with this contribution, dz, easily done. Now the next path element, x is 0, and z is fixed at 1, but dz has to be 0 in this case which you see here, dx is 0, dy is the only thing that's non-zero, and we have this left. And then finally, from 0, 1, 1 to 1, 1, 1, okay, y doesn't change, and z doesn't change along this subpath. Only dx changes. And we're left with this. We, these are all very easy to do integrals. We add up the components on each path and we get the answer. Now, the expression a dot dr, this meant nothing. Well, that was the integral, <laughs> integrand, but I needed to specify the path, and I needed to have a parametrization of the path that was consistent with the integrand in the sense that it allowed me to compute it. Now, the integrand was expressed in terms of x, y, and z, and I could express the three elements, three subpaths in terms of x, y, and z very easily, and dx, dy, dz. And I talk a little bit about that in this section, The Art of Computing Path Integrals. You need a good parameterization of the path. And we're going to see that in much more detail in the next chapter. But now I want to do a little bit of calculus with vector-valued functions of a vector variable. And I'll come back next time and pick up those details. So bye for now.